أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نويت الأربعين نويت الاعتكاف نويت الخلوة نويت العزة نويت الرياضة نويت السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد We have explained before about anger the 17 bad characteristics anger the love of dunya al hiqt hate now the fourth is al hasad hasad Every every human being was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from hasad. Allah revealed to his Prophet alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam surah al-falak for black magic and for hasad. Because hasad is a trunk, big trunk, big tree of bad characteristic. And Allah said in the Holy Quran, recite. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq. Min sharri ma khalaq. Wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد صدق الله العظيم give me that Quran there the Quran there blue Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam Surah Al-Falaq Surah 113 and it is from four ayat and it say I seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn because it's so so big is so it's so disastrous on a human being it's so difficult is a big problem so what you have to do you have to seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn min sharri ma khalaq from the mischief of created things. Means, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us refuge from every kind of fear and superstition, every kind of danger and evil. This evil things that happen to human being comes from whom? That's why it begins describing these four verses. First, O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you. Second, from any mischief that is being created, any things that might harm us, any danger, means they are saying the dangers they are preparing these dangers from the mischief of darkness. وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِكٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ From the mischief of darkness at, as it's overspread. Then he went from the mischief of those who blow on knots. وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ From this witchcraft. Witchcraft you call that? Witches. Witches. That they blow on rope that has knots, they make knots, they blow, they, re they read something, they blow, and they make black magic of, on people. And وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ The fifth verse of that surah, 
and from the mischief of the envious one as he practices envy. So, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are asking Allah to, to protect you from the mischief. And what was the biggest mischief? When someone has hasad, jealousy, he is jealous from anyone else. He doesn't like that that one to get any of Allah's favors or Allah's honors. He doesn't like anything for you of goodness. He likes everything for himself. Hakad is different. Hakad, which we explained before, hate. To hate, when you see someone has something, you hate that he has that one, and you make a conspiracy. Hasad, you want everything for you. You cannot accept anyone to have anything. So you don't want them to get goodness. You don't want them to be happy. So what you do? You try to destroy them. How you destroy them? Biggest things to destroy to humanity is black magic. Mischief of black magic. Superstition. So what they were doing? These uh, witches? Cursing. Making, they take ropes, they tie them in knots, and they spell. They read and they spell, they make la uh, some kind of spell and they say this is for this one. They might hang it here or might can hang it there because there is Harut and Marut. Allah mentioned them in Holy Quran. Two angels came on earth and they stayed on earth because they liked earth. Allah cursed them. They taught everyone sihr, magic, black magic. So people are using it. This black magic. And you find a lot of that still in Africa, in subcontinent, in Far East. Many people are doing that. And it is affecting. Why it's affecting? You cannot say no, there is, nowadays they say no, no, there is nothing like that. How there is nothing like that? Why Allah revealed that surah? Anyone knows? Huh? Yeah. Because they made magic on Prophet. Allah is teaching us. They cannot make magic on Prophet ﷺ. But Allah wants us to learn. And Prophet so humble that he said, yeah, they made magic on me. So Allah revealed the holy surah, that surah. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And from the mischief of those who blow on knots. Ah. who blow on knots, this having been a favorite form of witchcraft practiced by perverted women at that time. Such secret arts cause psychological terror. They may, they may be what is called magic or secret plottings or the display of false and seductive charms or the spreading of false and secret rumors or slanders to frighten men or deter them from right action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that surah and said, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And Prophet recite, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And blow on himself. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And blow himself until all that black magic disappeared. Allah is showing a human being that black magic Although it didn't affect on Prophet Sallallahu But sh showing that it might affect means it might affect on every one of us. And that's why there are a lot of ways to do black magic. If you go back into the history and get all these old books of different kind of uh, ways that you can uh, do uh, magic. Or you can, it's not necessarily black magic, you can use jinn to practice things. It is, a, 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 it is a, being done and it still today can be done. I was in Montreal 
some time ago, I was visiting <coughs> uh, Muhammad Musa there, and they brought for me a woman. She might be 50 years, 60 years, and she's African. And they say she is French. You know, in Africa they speak French. And they say there is shaitan in her. Someone did black magic and there is shaitan, there is a jinn in her. Huh? What? Possessed. And whenever she sit and when shaitan begin to play with her, she begin to speak Arabic. And no one was able to cure her. And she speak language and she curse in Arabic. She speaks very well Arabic, classic Arabic. Yeah. And she doesn't know one word of Arabic. And they brought her and and at that time she was okay and then suddenly she began to shout and and uh, curse in arabic and they said no nah, this is this is the beginning they have to hold her or else she cannot control herself this is in montreal so and she speaks Arabic very well. And she beca she began to tell me, she's a Muslim. She's a Muslim woman. And uh, she is, uh, she prays, she is devoted. And when that shaitan enters in her, she began to say, I'm Christian. I am, uh, there is no God. I'm cursing God. I'm in Arabic, in very classic Arabic language. She curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she come against prophets, she come in very good language. Oh. May Allah bless him, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim and Grand Sheikh. They taught us in such situation what you have to read. Not everything you read can cure. You have to read something. And it, it varies from one... Uh, uh, from one case to another case. So, whatever they gave at that time, I have to read, I read, and I'm reading, shouting, and that jinn shouting at me back. Well, I'm saying that jinn is repeating the same thing I'm saying. <laughs> And it was, everyone was afraid. And uh, there was a big struggle between me. That they didn't finish. They did she's, the, only the, the, the jinn was speaking out. And you can see the, the, the way the jinn was speaking, the, the sound. It's not a normal sound. <gasps> like that. With a, a classic Arabic classic literature. And cursing, and I'm cursing. He's cursing. <laughs> huh. Until I reach a state, there is no way. Either he burned me or I burn him. Yeah. And at that time, oh, Malana Sheikh's spirituality appeared. And he said, say this. I said, and the jinn completely burn finish and the lady wake up as if nothing had nothing with her gone completely and the jinn at that time went from her uh, toe the big uh, finger of the feet not yet for you <laughs> so if you Read the history and the books. Oh, there are a lot of things. You can enter in different levels of, they tell you what you have to do. For example, if you want to clear, uh, 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 cure sicknesses, different kind of sicknesses, they say to you, you 
enter for five days seclusion. When the moon is full moon, in the 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, you recite this, you do this in these days, and you recite for that person of, that he has that problem, he will be cured. So there are many, many, many different ways that has been, through the years, been practiced. And no one can say it is, it is uh, the, as they say today, uh, no, not, not bid'ah. That doesn't exist. It exists. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah revealed Surah Al-Falaq for that purpose. So when, why black magic comes? Because of hasad. They got hasad. They don't like that one. They don't like prophet to be prophet, seals of messengers. So they try to send someone to put magic on him. That's why Surah Al-Falaq came. So that hasad can affect every person in his life. And that's why Allah said, وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ But it's big. He said, and from the mischief of the envious one, as he practices envy, means if he practice envy, he will kill you with his envy. Mean he'll destroy you with his, his envy. And that's why, whatever you do, don't tell people. Whatever you have, don't show people. Because hasad will come. People begin to have hasad on you, jealousy, envy on you. Because they cannot, they, they cannot accept it, why you are in that situation and why they are not. They don't like you to get benefit and to be good. Malignant envy, translated into action, seeks to destroy the happiness or the material or spiritual good enjoyed by other people. The best guard against it is trust in Allah with purity of heart. So, hasad is will destroy the person. And, وَأَمَّا رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ As someone asked, why, why it is with Allah favors, you have to tell. You tell people that Allah gave you favor to encourage them to follow the way that you did in your life in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not in the way of shaitan, because no one in the way of Allah get an envy, hasad. But everyone in the way of shaitan will get the envy, will be envy, will be jealous. You are not going to go and tell me, oh, Shaykh, mashallah, I have the best I spend hundred thousand dollars to buy a Mercedes six hundred. That's why I'm a binamati rabbika for hadis. Huh? That's bring hasad. But if you tell me, Shaykh, Subhanallah, Allah with His favor made me that night to still wake, to be awake till Fajr, praying five hundred rakats. If I have envy and jealousy of that, that is good, that's a competition for goodness, that's acceptable. Prophet used to encourage Sahaba to learn from each other, to get competition between each other. Hasad in religion means to do more for everyone is okay. But not hasad for dunya, for fame, for position, They got hasad on Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why Prophet not from them? It's from a Quraysh tribe. So that's diff complete different kind of hasad. Or the what what you have asked. Wa amma bina'mati rabbika fahadis. With Allah favors, you have to tell everyone. 
We can say, Allah, Alhamdulillah, we turned this church into a masjid. Okay, let people be hasad with that. Let them turn ten churches into masjid. Okay? That is a good hasad. Understood? Uh, but the hasad that you want to prevent the good to come to others, that's not accepted. So the hasad that for your brothers, Muslim brother, you don't want them to be good, and you don't want anyone whom you don't love to be good, and you are trying to stop Allah's favors on them because of your hasad envy to them, that is will is not accepted. That is it will destroy you. That is a bad characteristic that when it grows it makes you always envying every person even you become envying your father or your mother or some people become envying their brothers their sisters some men envying their children some women envying the husband the husband envying the woman is not they say, why he is going working and we are not working? Why he is becoming a doctor? I am not a doctor like him. Husband and wife, they envy each other. Why Why I have to study psychology? Oh, he is not allowing me to study psychology. Why he is putting me at home to cook and he comes in the evening to eat? That shaitan begin to play and and Hasad Grand Sheikh said to destroy the Hasad is in Salatul Najat. Hasad that he said to us one of the remedies and cure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure you from Hasad is you wake up before Fajr. And after you pray Salatul al Wudu, then Salatul Najat, and then you make a sajda saying, Ya Rabbi, Inna al Hasad yaqul Hasanati kama yaqul taqul nar al Hatab. That the Hasad is eating my uh, Hasanat, uh, good deeds, as fire eats the wood. Hasad eats the good deeds, doesn't let you with any good deeds. How fire eats the wood, burn the wood. Uh, uh, hasad burn your good deeds. How it burns good your good, good deeds? Because it makes you to have to have bad intention for your brothers, and you try to plot for them and ask Allah because many people they try when you have something that you are seeing that your brother is getting something good you try you are get very upset that Allah is giving him that you try to make you get upset you get frustrated when you see someone becoming better than you is that you have that or we feel you see that or not between people yeah, yeah. if you don't have it Alhamdulillah, this is a good sign. But we are sinners. So we are struggling. Don't tell me that you don't have it. All of us, we have it. People struggle. It's okay to struggle and you, def you fight it, Alhamdulillah. But to keep it and you become more stronger, that is bad. Sometimes you have a someone, brother, get with a business at rate $100,000. Get upset. See, what, what, how he got it? Is that? Is that sure? Is that you? Or you are clean from that? Huh? How he got it? And I am working, running, running, I didn't get That's hasad. You don't want the good to reach the others.
No surrender, as we explained from Hakud yesterday, that Ahkamul Hakimin is Allah, the best of planners is Allah. So why I have to have hate against everyone? Allah wants that person to have it. So why I have to be jealous, not and asking Allah to stop it from him? You have one million, one million, ten million, ten million. Allah knows my knows that I am I am need. Allah will give me. I am happy. Alhamdulillah. Allah doesn't give me. I must be happy. I must accept Allah's decision. And that Sahib al Hasan, the one that he has that jealousy in his heart, Allah makes him also to die with his Hasad. It will hurt him back. They say, Ain al Hasud, Tubla bil Ami. That the eye of a jealous, envy person, may Allah made it blind. Because that where is the disease. They see the favors of Allah on you, they like to stop it. May Allah protect us. Fifth, Al-Ujbu. And if you want to keep on explaining on Al-Hasad, it continues and continues. Al-Ujbu. Wa huwa ru'yatu kullu ma sadara minhu shay azim. Al-Ujbu. To be, this is why they teach you in the, in, in the, what they call the civilization today, of today. They tell you, be proud of yourself. Is that? Make, the ujub means to be proud, to see yourself, to become arrogant. Because proud, when you become proud, you become arrogant. Or if you are arrogant, you see you are proud of yourself. Mutajrif, mutakabir. Mutakabir is what? Arrogant. Mutajrif, min awajub is proud of yourself. You see yourself the the biggest, the famous, the best one. You think that you can do things that no one can do. Pride is dangerous. They teach you, they say, be proud. Be proud, be independent. Means make yourself that you know everything. And else, everyone lower than you, less than you. Do not accept advice. Only your advice, only your thought that is good. I'm seeing young children, seeing them, it is becoming like a slang on their tongue. They say, I, I, the mother say to the child, I, proud, I am proud, proud of you, sweetie. The father, they, he say, oh, you are good at school, I'm proud of you. They use the word proud, which is bad. You can say, I'm happy of you, from you, that you did something good. But proud is teaching you from your childhood to keep that in your mind. Means you are, you are, you must see yourself as the best. No one is lower than you. Consident behavior, arrogance. If they say instead of proud, happy from you, sweetie, what's the difference? If you say I'm proud of you and you say I'm happy from you, what's the difference? Please. Pleased of what you did. Which is a better word? Huh? Pleased. Pleased. Why they put in the mind of children proud, 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 proud. 
when they grow up, I'm proud. Proud what it will give birth to what? To arrogance. And that's why children never accept their parents. Because they build them to be proud of themselves. And then when they grow up, they look at their parents as if they are ignorant. You are uh, from Demode. What's Demode? Who knows French here? Old fashioned. You are old fashioned. Awkward. I have to listen to you instead of saying, I'm proud of my father. He raised me. They say, no, I'm proud of myself. I'm not happy with my father or my mother. So, Ujub, to see oneself, Islamically, Prophet wasallam said to Sahaba, we finished the small jihad, the lesser jihad, we are coming to the bigger jihad. The lesser jihad is fighting the enemy. We are coming to the bigger jihad means the struggle of with the inner self. To struggle with yourself. Is that? Struggle with yourself, that ujub. Because Prophet want to tell the Sahaba, you have to fight with your bad self, with the ego. Because ego always wants to be top. Cannot accept it to be low. It's impossible. So Prophet wasallam gave them a lesson of the struggle with the inner self to cut down that ujub. When someone begins to cut ujub, proud of himself down, 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 what will happen? Huh? To such that he will be submitting to his Lord. He's not anymore submitting to himself. His sajda is pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. That's why Prophet sallallahu said, Akhwaf ma akhaf ala ummati as shirk al khafi. The most I fear for my ummah is the hidden shirk. Because they, Wala ushriku bi rabbi ahada. I cannot associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because people, when they do a favor, and that, uh, that uh, surah is revealed, Surah Al-Kahf, at the end of Surah Al-Kahf, uh, Prophet, what he said to teach us uh, 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 simplicity and humbleness. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Say that I am a human being like you. Not to see himself. That عُجُب. Allah is made, made telling him to bring it down. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيْهِ I'm a human being like you, but Allah is revealing to me. So, and he made it that Allah is revealing to him. So, he's, he is so humble. He has no arrogance, no pride in himself. When he is, relatively speaking, in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Imam Suyuti said in that explanation of that verse, because today, they explain it differently. This uh, Wahhabi uh, mentality. 
They say he's a human being like us, nothing else. But in reality, the explanation of Imam Suyuti on this verse, he said when Prophet wasallam was revealed to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he makes all this dunya, ink, all these oceans of universes, all these oceans may come ink, and all these trees become pen, and the pen writing from the ink, never Allah's words will end. So in that huge knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his beloved prophet in it, prophet found himself, Oh, Ya Rabbi, this is so great, your greatness, your azama. Comparing himself to that greatness that Allah put him in it, he said, Ya Rabbi, I am only a human being. It's in relatively speaking to that greatness, not relatively speaking to other people. So you see the difference? They hide this one now. And they went into a new explanation of their own today. That is like you, first, a human being. Prophet is describing, he is a human, normal, Ya Rabbi, I'm afraid you, in your presence to say I am something. I understood? So he dropped completely, he humbled, humbled himself as if no, no, no ujub anymore. There is no ujub in Prophet Sallallahu so that is the explanation of al-ujub, uh, arrogant, uh, proud, pr to be proud. The one that to be proud is the prized prophet, where Allah took him into Isra and Mi'raj. And never prophet was proud of himself. Why people are proud of themselves today? Muslims. Who gave them that authority? Teaching their children, be proud of yourself. Yeah, shaitan. And then what he said, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا What's that mean? That him do a good deed and? Huh? Ah, that's wrong. This is what they explain it. Make Make a good amal and don't make sure that you don't worship other than Allah. Don't make partners no Allah. That's what they say. Hey, you. No. That's completely not the meaning of this ayah. That was revealed in, on one of the Sahaba. That he used to do good things in the time of Prophet wasallam, And after he does his, these good things benefit the, the other Sahaba. He began to go and say to people and to Prophet, I did this. I did this. Yumannin. Shub Yumannin bil Arabi. Bil Inglisi. Yumannin. Yani. Yeah, he wants a recognition. He began to tell people, I did this, I did that, I did this. Ah, the ayah came. Ya Muhammad, tell him. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا If he wants to do something, let him do that only pure to Allah, not in recognition for himself of what he did. Show off. He must not show off what he is doing. It has to be pure to me. Why he is saying about himself, he did it good, alhamdulillah. No problem. That's why that verse was revealed. Not as they explain it. Uh, do something good and don't put partner with Allah. That's wrong. Of course, who can do that? A Muslim knows that he cannot make a partner to Allah. That ayah doesn't mean that. That's why it is. They used verses applied to kuffar. They used it on mu'min. But that verse was not that applying on anyone. It was applied to that sahaba. That when you do something good, don't show off, don't, don't, make, don't ask for recognition of what you did. Don't be proud of what you did, because you are doing it purely to me. So don't associate yourself with me, that's what it means. Don't associate that what you did, your amal, as if you have did, done it. If it is not my favor, you are not able to do it. 
So don't make ujub of yourself. Don't be proud of yourself. That's what it means. That ujub comes from there. May Allah forgive us. May Allah give us the benefit of this day. And tomorrow we continue, inshallah, bi al-Habib, bi al-Fatiha.